Hello, my name is Carl Watson and welcome to this new series of videos I'm creating on weekend breaks within the UK. Now this first one is going to be focused on Surrey, the county that I live in, and specifically on the North Downs Way starting from the popular spot of Box Hill. And joining me on that will be my good friend Chris. You really want me to just fall in now, don't you? <laughs> Please. That was Chris trying to do the ring rate scream. Get off the road, quick! <laughs> and then running parallel to that, I'll be joined by my mate Craig to do some of the green sand way, which will take us through many beautiful fields, farms, villages, and some nice country pubs. Stepping back into some 1940s <laughs> drama. Post war, post war. <laughs> now, normally, when there isn't a global pandemic on, my life switches back and forth between freelancing as a video editor in London and then going off traveling around the world making documentaries of these big epic adventures. So I thought these little weekend break videos would be a fun thing to do whilst we're waiting for the borders to open again. Plus it's a chance to show off my own country for a change. And who knows, once traveling does resume again, maybe I can still keep making these smaller videos in between the bigger adventures. Now, before we get into these two walks that we're gonna do, I wanna talk a little bit about discovering what's in your own backyard because I didn't know anything about these hikes when I first moved here to Red Hill. I had been living in Wandsworth in London for 12 years, but then in the summer of 2019, I bought my first flat here in Red Hill which for my purposes was just like a nice affordable commuter town with a quick train ride into London and an even quicker train ride to Gatwick Airport. But I had a very closed in view of the town, like all of my work, my friends, my life was still in London. This was just my hub for living in and for the first few months I'd been here, I hadn't explored the local area at all. But I remember when the lockdown began in March 2020 and we're all stuck inside all day and I remember seeing my mate Paul post on Instagram saying how grateful he was to have Countryside right on his doorstep where he lived because he could use his daily allowance to explore that each day. And I remember thinking, oh, I wish I had Countryside on my doorstep that I could explore every day. And I mentioned this to my mum and she was like, well, have you looked at a map of your local area to see what's around you? And I was like, mum, please, I'm an experienced traveler. I've been on many different adventures in countless countries all around the world. And you're asking me, have I looked at the map of my local area? <sighs> Actually, no, I haven't looked at the map at all, have I? So it turns out that literally on the other side of the train tracks to where I live is a giant nature park. So first up, I'm gonna show you that and a couple of other spots around here, which led me to discovering these two main walks that we're gonna do. So yeah, I'm literally just on the other side of the train track there. And the nature park is right here. So yeah, it's pretty sweet discovering this nature park right by your house, you know. We've been here the whole time without realizing it. And I've spent loads of time here now over the last year. This old nature park's been a great little haven during lockdown. You get some epic sunsets here. We're not gonna stick around here for sunset tonight because we're gonna go up to another favorite spot which is over there, which is Rygate Hill, because the sunsets from there are just epic. So let's go check that out now. And that's where we're heading up there, up into those hills, through that forest to Rygate Hill. Aha, uh -huh. public footpath, here we go. Just 
stop, look and listen, kids. And 15 minutes later, we're in the countryside. Oh, check this out. <laughs> So we're going to head up through Gatton Park to get up to Rygate Hill. Wow. So all the bluebells are out this time of year. It only lasts a couple of weeks, I think. This is incredible. Nearly there. Let's push up to Rygate Hill. But we're actually going to go a little bit further than that to Collie Hill or Coley Hill. That's where we get the really epic views. Maybe epic's too strong a word, but certainly far more epic kind of views than I ever expected to have just one hour's walk from my house. All right, we're here, Rygate Hill. But this is a view you get. So obviously you can see Rygate down there. And over there in the distance, you see Gowick Airport, which during lockdown was just like the biggest tease. It's like, oh, travel, I miss you. Yeah, during the day, this place has got massive queues because the food and drink they do is amazing. People just drive up, park up the car park here, get themselves a coffee, and do this short walk, which I'm doing. This is the last part of my walk. Actually, through the trees over here, on a clear day, you get a view all the way to London. So I'll see if I can try and zoom in with it on my phone. <laughs> it's not the best shot of London, but you see it right on the horizon. So over here, we have Rygate Fort, which was built at the end of the 19th century. And the idea was, it was like a defense mechanism for, to stop the French or anyone invading Britain. Like if they landed on the shores, this would stop them getting to London. But by the time they completed the fort, it became redundant because they realized the best form of defense was offense and they just built up the navy and stopped anyone from landing on the shores anyway. So they built the fort, but never really came to much use. All right, nearly there. And there are clouds on the horizon, so this sunset might just work out. So what we have here is a memorial for a plane that crashed right towards the end of World War II in March 1945. It was a B-17 crashed into this hill. And so they've left the gap in the trees here. That's sort of a memorial to them. And also they have these two wooden sort of ends of wings to sort of show the, what the, the wingspan would have been. And yeah, and the memorial sign here with the names of all the pilots that died in that tragic accident. there. I think this might just work out perfectly because the sun's peeking through the trees so might have a good one on our hands. This is the view. So this is my sunset spot. Cheers. The first time I came up here during lockdown, it's like April or something, when I realized the last time I'd watched the sunset was when I was in Vietnam. So it's kind of cool to be watching it again with a beer, except rather than on a beach on the other side of the world, I'm on a hill an hour's walk from my house.
The last bit of the path we've been walking on is part of the North Downs Way. And the North Downs Way is like a 153 mile uh, trail that runs from Farnham all the way to Dover, to the White Cliffs of Dover. And so after I came up here, I realized that just over there is Dorking and Box Hill. So why don't I get the train to Dorking, go up to Box Hill and walk all the way back on the North Downs Way back home. Just get the train and go and walk all the way back home. It's like a 10, 12 mile walk. So that's what we're gonna do next. Joining me for the walk is my good friend, Chris Tone. Easy. Now, the last time we filmed anything together was on a slightly larger scale on this, on a trip we called the Quest for Everest. Back in 2014, we traveled to China from Beijing all the way to Tibet, and then tried to reach the Everest base camp only for Chris to be hospitalized for three nights with severe altitude sickness. We had to abandon the tour and fly up to a safe altitude in Nepal for the rest of our time away. That was such a pain! However, in 2016, we returned to Nepal and successfully trekked up to Everest Base Camp, completing our quest. Now, obviously, having a near-death experience from altitude sickness can be quite traumatic, and it's a pretty sensitive subject, so I try not to bring it up with Chris too often. Look who's back, Christopher Tung. It was a quick walk from Dorking Station to the start of the walk. The first challenge of the hike is to ignore the winery to the left, and just keep going. Chris. Got his coffee, nearly missed a train for his coffee. Yeah, that's something that's more important, Carl. So yeah, it's just a quick like 10 minute walk from the train station, then you get the stepping stones bit, and this bit, if you don't come here early, you'll be queuing forever to go across the stepping stones, because lots of people with kids taking a while, having fun, kids, stupid kids having fun. Uh, there's a footbridge just over there, if it is crowded, so there's still a way across. But we're okay today, all right, cool. All right. Okay, then. Are you talking to me or are you talking to yourself? No, I don't talk. What, what were you just saying? I don't know what I said. You were saying this was nice. It's nice, Carl. <laughs> really great. Thank you so much for bringing me here. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that's uh, concrete. <laughs> you really want me to just fall in now, don't you? Uh, please. All right, so, made it across the stepping stones. <laughs> so, now for the, now for the, well done us. now for the only big, well, there's two big uphills today. The first one's the Box Hill, so we've got a bit of a climb to get up there, but <laughs> don't worry, Chris, it's only 200 meters above sea level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't run, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of false horizons on the way up here. You think, ah, oh, we're there, levels off. But no. You have said we're nearly there a lot. <laughs> up, up, up the stairs we go. <laughs> and into Chris's tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> that Christopher is dorking. <laughs> right. Talking. Talking at the market town. It's not East London. It was a check this in the 1700s by a man called Boris Todbringer. <laughs> Which of course is German. <laughs> Box Hill. See, wasn't too bad. And good. Go. All right, so we're <laughs> and um, go. Nice. Three, <laughs> two, one. And so three. <laughs> All right, we're here, we're here at Box Hill, which is a super, super popular spot in Surrey. And um, one of the reasons it's such a popular spot is there's a car park over here. And around here, there's all these different kind of walks you can do, like short walks, long walks, medium walks, hard walks, whatever you want, there's got something for you. So 
It's a great spot. Lovely views of Dorking down there. Um, but we're not going to stick around. We're not going to do any of the walks around the sort of box hill area. We're going to carry on down the North Downs Way, heading back to Rygate, heading back to that sunset spot. We're going to head there and then find a pub. So that's the plan. So follow me, Christopher. No. All right. Then. So on the North Downs Way, it is signposted with, uh, just got to look out for the acorns and follow that. Chris like Chris just commenting on that, I'm basically wearing the exact same clothes that I wore uh, on the Everest track, which yeah, is true. Yeah, I'd assumed that you'd <laughs> bought new ones. But uh, Adidas trousers really do last. <laughs> That'll be a good shot. But, uh, <laughs> These are the boots that got us to Everest. Oh, yeah. See, I may uh, have a bad carbon footprint from flying everywhere, but I don't ever change clothes so you know <laughs> or wash them or wash them or myself <laughs> get off the road quick <laughs> do a trombone we can do a trombone you got the right lens <laughs> and i'll do the sound effects so walk forward while panning back <laughs> it is actually this way though <laughs> that was chris trying to do the ring race scream <laughs> I think I've broken something. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this is very, uh, very Middle Earthy, borders of the Shire kind of look around here. We're just coming up to Bettleworth Quarry, just around here. This was a uh, 1930s it was a chalk and lime works quarry, and it's now become like a hidden nature. Okay. They called it something like a S S S S S S I special site of special interest. Interest. Um, but it just shows you how, how nature can grow back when people bugger off. Um, I see Thanos was right. <laughs> Follow the road, Chris. This is the short but exciting passage of the walk along the road. We get back to the proper side. Oh, you know what we can do here? This is it. <laughs> You're not quite there. Hold on, come to that bit. This is it. I'm going to take one step further. It's the farthest from home I've ever been. <laughs> come on, Sam. <laughs> what Bilbo used to say. Hurry up, you fat c***. <laughs> <laughs> This is the bit, I keep wanting to say the valley floor, but it's not a valley, it's just we're not on the hill. But yeah, we stay down here for a bit, follow the tree line before we get the final views. And then it's nearly pub time, Chris. Yay! Normally this walk takes two hours, but because we've been stopping and filming, we're just having fun, you know? You might have been. Well, <laughs> I've been having a great time. <laughs> uh, it takes a lot longer, so. Go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your thoughts, Christopher. What do you think of it? I think it's very pretty, Carl, and I think you're very lucky to live out here in the middle of nowhere, miles away from all your friends, family, <laughs> and anyone who cares about you. Which is not a huge pool of people in the well, You know, I've got off track here. <laughs> it's very lovely. <laughs> Here we are, back. Well, it's your first time here, but I'm back to me. I'm confused. Where am I? <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> what year is this? <laughs> okay, so we basically come to the end of the walk. Well, almost the end. Um, we started all the way over there on Box Hill. Got to my favorite viewpoint. Absolutely love it up there. We've had such a glorious day of weather for today. It's worked out perfectly. And the best thing is the pubs are now open. At least the beer gardens are, so we're going for a drink down in Rygate, which is that away. Um, but I've had a very good time despite Christopher being here. <laughs> There's Chris walking off to Rygate. 
Rye Gate. Home of Rye. <laughs> and Gates. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. 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 That tastes glorious. Does yours taste glorious? Yes. It tastes glorious. <laughs> I'll do the, I'll do totally the PG natural, version. No, totally natural dialogue. <laughs> Now, the second walk I'm going to do works as a nice companion to the first, as it follows the Greensand Way, which also stretches for many miles from Surrey to Kent. I actually prefer this walk to the previous one, because whilst on the North Downs Way you get the big views, this one has more variety as you weave between different beautiful farms, fields, villages, and most importantly, country pubs. <laughs> Walk number two, Greensand Way. Joining today is Craig. Yes, Craig. Hello. How are you doing, Craig? Are you excited? Genuinely very excited. Um, I've been dying to get out of London for a few weeks now, to be honest. See some greenery, smell some nature, and obviously more tempted by the pubs along the way, yeah. which I've been told there are four. This walk I first did in lockdown. I've done this walk a million times now. But I was walking and going, you could turn this into a country pub. <laughs> like pub crawl, country walk pub crawl. So that's what we're going to do. There's four pubs between here and Rygate, and then there's six in Rygate at the end. So we'll see how we do. But, uh... Ten would be a good number. Eight for ten. <laughs> Double figures. The quality of the video might deteriorate as we go through the day, um, but we'll see what happens. Basically, we walk up here for 10, 15 minutes. Always that's a bit longer than you think, and then you turn left to join the Green Sand Way. Not taxi down. <laughs> that's our ride back. <laughs> See, it's the first part of the walk where it's like, oh, it's actually quite peaceful. Car! <laughs> All right, we've made it already to the start of the proper start of the walk. So we've joined the Green Sam Way now. Uh, thing to know about the Green Sam Way, it's like 50% of it's well signposted. <laughs> so um, just watch out for the cattle grail. Don't twist the ankle. Especially when we're not even drunk yet. Um, it's 50% well signposted. So the first time I did this, I had to bring like loads of instructions. I was checking them every like two minutes. But then the second time I did it, it was like a nice memory test and I tried to do it without them. But yeah, definitely bring the instructions for this walk. Otherwise you will get lost. I'm trusting Carl. <laughs> so if, if I don't get a pint in the next 45 minutes, I'm blaming him. Yeah, it's 45 minutes to the first pub. That's what I promise. <laughs> so we'll see how we do. Like it, mate? Couldn't ask for any more, could you? The weather's perfect, the scenery is amazing, absolutely brilliant. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And also, you have to do the gladiator shot here. Oh. All right, go. That's the shot. Yeah. Boom, gladiator in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> the funny thing about the gladiator shot is there's people who still genuinely do it, uh, like, unironically in travel videos and even real movies. It's like, everyone knows the shot, it's been done, but it is fun to piss around with it. So yeah, basically up there is the previous walk that I did with Chris, all along the ridge. And all the way up there is that sunset viewpoint right on the hill up there. Some good style crossing, well done. Success! <laughs> Oh, what's that? What, what's happened, Craig? What's happened? Oh, my first nail sting. First shots of 2021. It's come oh. back to kill me. God damn it. All right, call the ambulance. Done. Done. <laughs> Shadow Vax. See, kids, how you brush the style. I did it too. Whoop. Oh, see if I can do two in a row. Oh my god, yes! god champion! Come on! <laughs> Alright, we're getting close to the village, are you excited? <laughs> I can smell that pint! <laughs> smell it! Behold, Brockham! I don't think we could find another more quintessentially Surrey place. <laughs> wow, this is like 
Step me back into some 1940s <laughs> drama. Post war, post war. Yeah. <laughs> Village number one, pub number one, as Craig just said, but there is scaffolding, so I'm worried. <laughs> I'm worried our plan might be foiled. Oh, there's people sitting outside. We're all right. Made it. <laughs> The lady just asked me to come and pay. Oh, yeah. That's what British summer's all about. A as pint in a beer garden. Wanted a local ale, but it's an ale nonetheless. It's hearty. I'll put heart, um, hairs on my chest, but <laughs> definitely feels rewarded. That 45 minutes definitely earned a pint in that time already. It's a nice local beer of beer Moretti. <laughs> <laughs> bit of Italy in Surrey. Bit, bit of Italy into yeah. It's bringing an international thing into <laughs> So this one was good. How far is it to the next pub, Carl? Um, it's 15 second walk over there. Oh, it's coming. Here we go. Here we go. You're so excited. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be out. Can't be more excited. Can I blame you? Up to. Wow. Cheers. I've gone for what the locals describe as the San Miguel, I think it's pronounced this. <laughs> How much of Surrey does it taste? Uh, that, like San Miguel is the taste of Surrey. Like, you know. <laughs> I'm not I'm not an ale drinker, I should explain at this point. Yeah, I just I'm easy to please, just give me a good lager. Good lager, and I don't want to drink carling or any piss like that, but give me a good lager. Easy to please. Craft ales, I'm not a big fan of craft beers trying too hard. Yeah, just a good lager. What do you get this time then? <sighs> well this is the um sheer drop. Did you know it was the champion winning beer at the um, beer festival? Which beer festival? Olympia, Olympia Beer Festival. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago. This, this, this gentleman here gave us some excellent knowledge <laughs> about, uh, about the local beers, which is great. Oh, of course. There you go. <laughs> local knowledge, there we go. Sweet. Best beer in town. There we go. It's what you want. It's nice to sort of chat to randomness again, it's what we've been missing. Really, I wouldn't have had this beer without and yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, cheers to that, cheers to San Miguel. <laughs> oh, let's go. Yeah, it's 15 minutes walk to the next village, next pub, so. I feel like I need to lie down after that. <laughs> but then, after that, it's 45 minutes walk. That's going to be the test, really, it's sort of the bit in the middle. Um, buy, some, uh, buy some tins uh, for the... <laughs> yeah, get some journey. roadies. We could get... That's a good idea, <laughs> yeah. actually. That's why you brought me along. <laughs> see, see, the reason I buy you. <laughs> Not just to hold the camera. <laughs> Slow, children and animals. <laughs> All the views from the previous walk, you can just see over there the quarry that Chris and I stopped at. That's why these two walks work well together. You do that first one, and then now you sort of see it all back from the, the other angle. We're on the, uh, uh, just at the outskirts of the uh, village Betchworth, like the main bit's a bit further over that way. But the walk here takes you through uh, churchyard and cemetery, so you've got to be a bit respectful. We're not going to get the drone out or do anything fancy. But a fun fact about this church, have you seen four weddings and a funeral? Of course, of religiously. Course. Of course, because it's like a British classic. The first wedding from four weddings and a funeral was filmed in that church. That is pretty sick, actually. So that's a little fun fact. Like, I've, I rewatched the film once I found that out, because the start of the film is them rushing. You don't really get to see the exterior. But yeah, inside is where they shot that first wedding. So, yeah. That's. That's, little, little, little movie tour of Surrey. That's my highlight of the day so far. Yeah, I mean, that's the only movie location <laughs> you're getting, but uh, still. And so pub number three. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Here's this building right here. Oh, we've got space for us. Right, right. Cheers, mate. Cheers again. What are you going for this time? I know you said it already. But... Yeah, I guess. So Surrey Hills, not necessarily award winning as this one, but it tastes very much the same. Um, <laughs> but the pub inside looks really nice. It's sort of ye olde England style. This is a pub I've walked past many times, but it's nice to actually finally have a drink here. Uh, the Dolphin. Uh, Gorgeous little village. Yeah, I went inside and it's all like Yoldy England, but they were playing reggae music. So I didn't really know what to think. I was like, you kind of wanted to hear like, you know, fiddles and like little acoustic guitars and kind of like folk music. Kind of was just like, am I in the Caribbean? But whatever, we'll just go for it. Anyway, I went for the um, the, the Peroni, just carrying on by tradition of classic English ales. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, as refreshing, right? Just as good, just as good. Turned to a good day, turned to a great day. All right, here we go. 
Onwards. Onwards. It's just so peaceful on this walk though. It's just so chilled. Like, we were just saying this at the pub, but it sounds all hippy dippy, but it's just the, the sounds of nature. Birds tweeting. So true. Wind blowing. Uh, I couldn't feel more out of London right now than we are yeah. here. And you're not that far out at all. No, not at all. Craig, watch out. Not just any kind of chickens, those free range ones. I'm particularly scared of those. Lethal, lethal. Absolutely. Like honey badgers. <laughs> <laughs> Was it the, uh, the drop bears in Australia? If you are new to the UK and you're uh, new to sort of walk around the countryside here, um, free range chickens are lethal. And that's why they have those signs. Many deaths, very sad. Many deaths from free range chickens. bit the walk we have to weave our way through the golf courses yeah. trying to get hit well. things you have to walk look out for on this walk is uh free range chickens yeah. sting nettles golf balls and golf balls <laughs> <laughs> the perils of the green sand way <laughs> so along this stretch here is the most random thing you would ever 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 expect to see on a country walk in Surrey right if you look through the trees through there All right. what do you see oh we're in Japan it's a toy game! <laughs> Billion! Oh wow, this was a long walk. I didn't think we'd gone that far, but wow, okay. <laughs> I was walking down here. See, they've also. There's a peacock. There's a parrot that says hello. Oh, there's a parrot. Oh, he's talking back. Basically, yeah, so this is a, someone's house here that we're filming, but you know, whatever. Um, they, they got all these, most, lots of animal cages, most of them are empty. There is a parrot that talks back to you, but there is a Tory gate. You get another view of it from around here. Sold, yeah. I'm, imp I'm impressed. <laughs> anyway, pub. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, pub number four. The Skimmington Castle is a good, good, good pub. The food here is amazing, so. Cheers. Cheers. What are you going for this time? I don't know, it's another Surrey one. Pilgrim, a lot darker in colour. Yeah. Probably more resembling now the, my dehydration. <laughs> we want to be sitting out front, but there wasn't any seats. So I'll get a shot of out front and how beautiful this pub is. But we're, we're in this nice garden, but we've been very careful where we film because there's a bunch of kids on the pie right now. <laughs> oh. Just filming the cute horses, and now we've spotted a snake. That's got to be an adder. Yeah, it's too big to be a grass snake. Random finds on our walks, and we're, we're, we're nearly there to Rygate now. We've kind of turned off the green sand way now because that keeps going uphill. We're going to go by a prior park. Up oh, there's the viewpoint. Nearly back at Rygate. It's the last stretch. Hopefully, one of the several pubs in Rygate will have space for us to sit down and have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be a big anticlimax of the <laughs> pub. Oh, it's so cute. A little nature walk at the end. Fish, ducks, snakes. Alright, made it to Rygate pretty much. We're in Prior Park just outside Rygate. So we've got one more pint to go. So that's Rygate. But well, we're going to Blue Anchor just here. Boom! So at last our journey comes to an end. But the last one. Final hurrah. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so we're in the final pub of New Anchor, which has an amazing beer garden, uh, but it's full because it's 6 o'clock on a Saturday. <laughs> it's been a really great day out. Just the meat to come out an hour outside of London, packed up for weeks, walking through nature, seeing village pubs that we've not seen for so many months. This has just been absolutely ideal. Absolutely ideal. Again, just sampling more of the local beer. <laughs> uh, just keep it on the ground. So, yeah. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. It's been a pleasure. So that's it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little video, a little bit different to what I normally do, but I hope you guys still enjoyed it. Hopefully it's given you some ideas for what there is to see and do in Surrey, whether you're traveling around the UK or visiting from abroad. And if not, hopefully it's just given you some inspiration for discovering what's in your own backyard, wherever you are watching this in the world.
Now, this is called a weekend break video, but for the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you, you might have noticed that it's actually shot across the space of like two months. <laughs> it's basically because the weather's been terrible and I've been really busy with work. But yeah, start of the video, there's no leaves on the trees. By the end, it's full on summertime, and my haircut pretty much changes every other shot as well. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Anyway, uh, the next one of these is gonna be in Dorset. I've already filmed that with my mum, so that should be out next week. And then I've got four more trips planned uh, for the rest of June around the UK before I start going abroad again. But even once I do start traveling abroad again, like I said at the start, it'd be nice to sort of continue doing these little videos in between the bigger adventures. So, loads of things to look forward to. Thanks for watching as always. Um, you know what to do, like, like, share, subscribe, notifications, all that stuff. You've seen a YouTube video before, you know the drill. So make sure you do all that if you don't want to miss out on anything. And I'll see you in the next video in Dorset.